So a funny thing happened to me the other day. A cop came to my door and said my dog was chasing a boy on his bike. I said, sorry, buddy. He got the wrong house, so I closed the door. And I thought to myself, what is this world coming to? My dog doesn't even have a bike. This right here has the ability with a 30 caliber clip to disperse with 30 bullets within half a second. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. You're listening to your weekly dose of BS, Ballistically Speaking, the Ballistically Speaking Podcast. Can you imagine that? The nerd. No, it, it sounds a lot like them coyotes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I'm glad you're picking up on the vernacular. It's it's great to see we're you know we're having some influence on you folks down south. <laughs> I mean, we got to be like our fellow Kanukistans and start speaking <laughs> in fluent <That's> right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Ron, this is where the Cayutes are. <laughs> How are you doing tonight, <laughs> Mr. Ben? I'm good, Ballistics. man. You know, I'm good. How are you, Rooster? The artist formerly known as Bending Ballistics. I'm not too bad. Not too bad. You can see I'm uh, I'm up in my camp room. I'm away at work right now. Not in my uh, not in my man cave. Hey, Yenzi, how's it going? Yenzi's uh, Yenzi's a close personal friend. He's here all the time, providing entertainment uh, from an eastern uh, east. How do I say that? Uh, Eastern, uh, well, not a Eastern Europe, a European perspective. Probably not. <laughs> East of here, anyway. Anyway, awesome. hey, everybody. Welcome to Ballistically Speaking BS session number 18. Uh, we're without Chris tonight. Uh, last night, we didn't have the show because uh, it was his wife's birthday, and I thought he'd better take care of that instead of prioritizing the podcast. So I thought, fair enough. Um, so, uh, tonight, however, he texted me, he's, he's down in, uh, Mexico right now with his wife and his brother and, uh, they're having some fun down there. Apparently they're going to some, uh, social event, some dinner party or something tonight that they didn't know about last night. So it's just Bender and me here. <laughs> you know, I mean, I figured... Like, why not us jump on each other's stream? I mean, you kind of stole my name with the Ballistically Speaking podcast um, with mine being Bending Ballistics, and I was okay. established You might want to take a breath. Take a breath now. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm one. Just, <laughs> I'm just aggravating you a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. But, so what's going on down south? You know, it's getting cold. Yeah, I'll bet. Okay, how about you tell me uh, your 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 woes about the temperature, and I'll li I'll 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 uh, I'll listen for a little bit, and then I'll well, tell you was, about ours. It was a brisk seventy six degrees today with Ooh. the wind at the north northeast at five to ten miles an hour. Barometric <sighs> pressures were about seventeen percent, um, and it's supposed to get like. 31 degrees tonight. It's supposed to frost. I mean, I mean, we might have to close schools tomorrow due to the cold. <laughs> that, is, that sounds really rough. I'm, I'm telling you. It's, uh, yeah. It's, have you seen any snow yet? <laughs> what is that fluffy white stuff you talk about? <laughs> so, yeah, well, we get snow I, here, but. It's not like back home in Wisconsin where we got snow on like Halloween and it didn't stop till Labor Day. Um, no. <laughs> this this is my German friend. Nobody understands the temperature down there. You know what? I can't I can't convert well between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Uh, we've we've had uh, the metric system shoved down our throats since I was about eleven years old, which is <laughs> holy crap. That's a long time ago. But anyway. Um, you know, we're getting down to highs of, uh, at least where I am right now, uh, highs of uh, 10 to 12 degrees Celsius, and we're below freezing at night. And there's parts of Canada that are already seeing snow. <laughs> See, that's wild to me. Like, 
See, well, I mean, when we got away from England and we didn't even want the metric system, but now like all of our American cars are all in metric. Like all the wrenches that you need are metric. Oh, yes. But absolutely. foreign cars are in standard. Yeah, it's so fun that it's it's kind of a it's kind of a backdoor attempt to get you guys, you know, caught up with the rest of the world. I, I guess <laughs> you, so. You think about it. Uh, where do all your fasteners come from? Because the Americans, and, and it's not unlike uh, what Canadians do, manufacturers here. It's it's uh, it's far cheaper to get fasteners and small parts and plastics and everything else made overseas. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for them to do, uh, because uh, manufacturers of those types, um, you know, will do that work for um, many, many, many companies around the world. And because you're of the few left uh, sure. that still deal with uh, the imperial system, uh, they'll do sh- shorter runs, smaller runs for American orders. Um and it's it ends up being more expensive so naturally you're going to get m12 bolts where you should have you know where you typically have half inch bolts uh things like yeah. that so. sorry i'm trying to adjust this light i've got like a weird glare going on in my forehead and it's making oh. it look huge <laughs> right? nah nobody's gonna judge you i mean really harshly <laughs> I, I mean i could really talk in like southern kentucky lingo and like really mess everybody up <laughs> like like start talking about down yonder in a country mile and oh, stuff like yeah. that here we go <laughs> and oscar, oscar says nothing like buying a four by eight sheet of plywood 13 millimeters thick yeah that's exactly right <laughs> <laughs> yeah such yeah. is life here <laughs> well so what's weird is like at work um, I have to do everything in metric because um, we're a Canadian based company where I work. And so everything's in metric, like all of our temperatures, all of our weights and everything. Yeah. So like at work, I can do it, but I'm oh. being paid to do it. So it's like, yeah, I'll do it there. Right. But yeah, yeah. The second I clock out, it's like, no. Well, we've, you know, unlike uh, the U.S., uh, where they actually sacked up and broke away from Britain. Uh, we clung on to mama's tit for far too long, and we still haven't gotten away from that. So that's, I guess, well, where we lie. Now you're sitting on daddy's knee. Yeah. Yeah. Who's daddy now anymore? Ed? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know either. So, so I imagine... Uh, what is this? <laughs> You, Kaikazi, I'm surprised you and Bending didn't have a facial hair kung fu fight during the last live chat. You know, it, it might come down to that. You gotta, you gotta catch up though, man. Like, <laughs> I'm trying. You're <laughs> this is, well, all- you know, things. It, it's proven. It's a proven fact uh, biologically that things don't grow well in the cold. Is that why Canadians are so short? <laughs> Is that what happens? I, I guess so. I mean, <laughs> I've never met a tall Canadian. So. No, no. Yes, you have. As a matter of fact, you have, just not in Are person. You tall? Are you tall? <laughs> no, no, I am not. According to my girlfriend, I'm tall, but she's she's Salvadoran and she's uh, four foot eleven. I'm five five nine and something, and so I'm tall to her which doesn't mean a whole lot, I guess. But Chris, on the other hand, is an honest six foot six. Really? Yeah, he's a big dude. I didn't know he was that big. <laughs> and he just sits shorter in the screen than I do. I'm going to perk oh. myself up a little bit. Yeah, just make me look bigger. I have small man syndrome. <laughs> yeah, well, so like you and I are the same height, um, but like I have my, like I can't touch the ground on my stool that I'm sitting on. My legs are too weak. <laughs> but I have to sit way up where you can't see me because, like, I'm, I work where I do my lives is literally in my gunsmithing room. So I'm sitting at my gunsmith table, which, when I'm standing up, it comes up to my navel, which would probably be about the same height as you. Um, 
<laughs> or it's like, it probably come up to your, no, I'm saying like, it'll come up to your navel. Like how oh, it would. oh, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. That, that's what I'm meaning. And, and then, uh, um, but when I sit at my stool, like it's up to like my chest. So I have to have my seat way up. So my knees are like buried into it. Oh, but if man. I don't, you can't see me. I see. Are, are stools a thing in the U.S.? Because, you know, the only stool I have is one that, that has one of those tables that folds down like this and I eat my dinner off it. No? Yeah. Bad, like Bad joke. <laughs> like a high chair for kids. Yeah. <laughs> bad jokes, basic dude stuff. <laughs> well, we have, two, we have two types of stools here in the U.S. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, you have a bar stool mm -hmm. and then you have like the... I want to hear it. Secondary. I want to hear body it. function. <laughs> I knew you were going there. <laughs> so I thought my joke was bad. <laughs> oh. oh man! So it's uh, gonna, gun, it's gun gonna be podcast. a fun show. I've already got gun in trouble. Podcast. We're uh, we're talking about stool. <laughs> yeah. Um. So hunting season started down there for you guys yet? Yeah. Uh, today was youth season, um, for deer. Oh, um, okay. And, but we've been in squirrel season for a month here. Um, my buddy Hootie who, he just went and shot an antelope and a bison out in Colorado, I think is where he was. You could cause he would be able to. Nice. You could cause he would be able to tell me for sure if I'm right on that. Um, hmm. But yeah, cool. So, uh, did, uh, so, what did he kill the bison with? Assuming he killed it, you just said shot him. Um, I really don't know. I haven't seen his video, so his video oh, is okay. live right now, and oh, so I'm not able to right? catch it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna have to catch it after. Gotcha. Um, and I missed his last night because I was on two other streams last night. I had one, and then right after I had another. So. Holy cow! You've been busy. I have, man. I haven't even been able to go fishing today because oh, it's I mean, rough. It is. I mean, <laughs> the water's still warm. So if I fall in it, I don't get hypothermia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't want to stay in the water too long up here right now. Are you going to do polar plunge this year? No. 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 I'm on the prairies. The water's too far away. Oh. <laughs> plus, plus, my old ass can't swim. Well, that's a bit of a lie. I, I can actually swim quite well. I just have a small problem getting to the top for air. Yeah, not so good at that. So I just stay away. <laughs> well, I tell everybody when they're like, aren't you afraid of drowning? I tell them shit floats, so I'll be all right. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know what I'm made of, but I don't float. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> I even tried in the ocean a couple of times and no such luck. Nope. Damn. So youth season, you said. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Oh, is that right? We don't have anything like that there. Once hunting season's nope. open, it's open for everybody. Uh, right now we have, uh, well, it's October. So um, at least in Saskatchewan where we are, we, where we are. Uh, I think muzzleloader uh, season started. So um, it's still part of primitive weapons um, seasons. Uh, bow or archery starts for uh, elk um, in many places, uh, like the third or fourth week, I think the fourth week of September and runs through um runs through September. They also give the rifle hunters, uh, the elk rifle hunters a chance um, for, you know what I want to say, in open season, four days uh, <laughs> to try and go get an elk uh, with a rifle uh, near the end of September. And then uh, so <laughs> what was Doug saying? Doug says, Kurt swims like an ax. He goes down head first. <laughs> <laughs> that's not <laughs> far from the truth, Doug. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so yeah, I think we're on a muzzleloader season for uh, for deer. 
and then I don't know, there's the various draw seasons around for, for some of the animals that are less plentiful. I know, I think, uh, some of the Southern zones in the province just went through, um, antelope season. We don't have a whole lot of antelope here. Uh, and that's, that's a draw as well. So we're, we're kind of all over the place, but we, we have nothing like a, a youth season. That's, that's interesting to me. Oh yes. Yeah, Oscar sure. says waterfowl season. According to Oscar, that's the most important one. I always forget that. I'm not much of a bird hunter. Yeah. So, so. waterfowl is a big thing where mm. I am. So I'm, I'm not, I'm only an hour or so from land between the lakes. Have you ever heard of that? Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'm only an hour or so, well, hour and a half ish from land between the lakes, and they have the big um, goose um, reserve right there. Oh, and then okay. they have the duck fields that they flood. They fill them with Milo, and then they flood them, and it's public really? land, so anybody can go fish on it. Yeah. Or go oh. hunting on it. What do you mean they fill them with Milo? My, do you know what Milo is? I have no idea. So Milo is, you ever buy birdseed from the store? Never. Have you ever seen it in the store? I've seen it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so like if you ever look at wild birdseed, the little white pellets, and they're like little round white pellets and okay. yellow and orange, that's Milo. Oh, okay. It's very like, is common. It it's an organic product mm -hmm. of some sort? Okay. Yeah, so Milo is really common in like your pet foods also. So dog food, cat food, fish <laughs> food, rabbit food, because it's naturally occurring. Um, it's really popular in the prairies. Um, do you know what morning glories look like? Uh, roughly, yeah. So Milo looks a lot like a morning glory flower. Okay. But it's a little more prominent yellow. Hmm. Oh, it's pretty cool. Rob Longridge says it's millet. Maybe, maybe it's the same thing, and that's that's what uh, uh, it's just a just a naming difference between the north and the south. It could could very well be. It sounds like millet. Yeah. Well, hmm. millet millet is common, also, but Milo is just so cheap around here, and it grows so well around here. Okay. I mean, so they so they flood it with Milo. So they plant the Milo and okay. the millet, and when it starts coming up, once it gets like six to eight inches, they right. flood the waters, like they let the water go back in there, like they'll put right. up a temporary dam, yeah, and then they'll bust out the dam and let the water come in where it's like two or three feet deep, okay, and and then it's a oasis for the birds because it's got coverage, it's got food, it's got everything they need, sure. Sure. And then when they come mm. in, there's always a very unfortunate hunting accident down there every year. Oh, no kidding. Just got I mean, blasting everywhere or what? Yeah. I mean, it's hunt. It's just hunting on public land. I don't know. Do y'all have public land hunting there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's the same concept. Like mm -hmm. some jack wagons like, oh, you're in my blind spot. Oh, God. Yeah, like, you, get, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, or, for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's there's, there's disputes all the time. Somebody goes to Crown Land. We we call it Crown Land, public land, whatever. Same thing, and uh, uh, you know, sets up a blind or whatever. You don't necessarily need permission to be on that land, uh, but you know, somebody will set up right beside that guy or or object to. Uh, somebody being in a particular spot or, you know, getting there late and, oh, I've been hunting here for 20 years. Well, fuck off. You're not hunting here this year. So, yeah. But, I mean, we've got space and sparse enough um, uh, population that it's really not all that common. So what is y'all's overall population in Canada? Like We're at about 33 million. So... Uh, so New last, York City basically has more people in it than y'all do. Is it more than 30? I believe so. It's got to be right at it. Oh, is that right? I thought it was, for some reason, I had it in my mind that New York was 10. And and that that that's indicative of how much I give a fuck, honestly, about New York City. 
Well, <laughs> I really think with how New York is getting with their gun laws, they need to just renounce and go to Canada because they have the exact same gun laws there as y'all did. <laughs> I just want to say, hey, Luke, it's good to hear, have you here. I haven't seen you on here for a long time. Yes, this is live. Uh, for once, it's not a recorded event. For once. Good to have you here anyways, Luke. Hope you're doing well. Too bad your moose hunt didn't go as well as uh, you would like to have liked it to have. But at least you got out, unlike some guys. Well, oh, I mean... Budman says Canada's population is 38 mil. Uh, well, that'll tip the scale now. <laughs> I mean, y'all might just have to start growing out on the Great Lakes, y'all are going to overpopulate it, man. You know what? As far as I'm concerned, uh, any more growth in Canada, I don't care to see. We're good. But there's... <laughs> I mean, that's really not a lot of people, though. <laughs> no. I mean, when you think about it in the global scale of things, 38 million is really not that many. No, uh, it's not. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's a comfortable spot. I mean, the, I mean, I'm a bit of a different case, I suppose, than than most people are. Uh, are I think most people feel a little bit differently than I do. I know uh, a lot of people in my circle feel the same way, but uh, I think there's quite enough people on the planet. Uh, to be honest, and I like my space, and that's that's one thing about uh, growing up in Canada, especially on the prairies. Uh, you do have a lot of space, and we do tend to uh, value that a lot. Yeah, uh, you know, the bigger centers, uh, the, the people that that uh, value that, uh, and and like that, they can have it. Um, just uh, just don't come to my space. And uh, especially if you expect reception like you would get in the city, I suppose. Yeah. Cause, cause no, I get, get that. I get that. <laughs> Oscar says the only reason to get more people is to piss off Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I mean, y'all did give us Green Day. <laughs> and several other... Uh, uh, like I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the band Green Day. Yeah. We also gave you Neil Young, and you know what? You can have him. <laughs> well, y'all can keep Justin Bieber too. Oh yeah. Well, there's that. That'll be a fight to the death because nobody wants that dumbass. <laughs> um. We also gave you Jim Carrey. That's nothing to be proud of. Not now, no. anyway. A, no, I, I don't even know what he's doing now. I read some article on him uh, just a little while ago, like I'm talking days ago, uh, you know, what happened to Jim Carrey and he's just kind of gone off the deep end. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, they lost me at, uh, he spoke out against guns. <laughs> well, that's a total fucking write off for me now. Well, um, that's every Hollywood super villain, superstar, whatever you want to call them. Almost, All yeah. of them are gun experts now. Like, I had no idea that they were all gun experts and knew exactly, like, ballistic coefficients and everything. Like, I'm so glad that I was told that the AR-15 shoots a bullet three times faster than anything I own. Oh, like, yes. They I have never a, knew that. Don't they have an explosive tip on them or some damn thing, too? Uh, dude, they blow the lung right out. Did you know that? <laughs> no, that's the nine mil. Get your shit straight, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, it explodes on impact, and the doctors can't recognize... That's what right. somebody looks like anymore. <laughs> Damn, I forgot about that. Oh, shit. Don't What's get this? me off on this tangent. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, Alec Baldwin, I, I saw something the other day that he's he's uh, making Rust again, that, that movie that, uh, that was in production when he shot that woman. Yeah, so here's the fucked up thing about all that. So... He just settled out with the family. Um, and part of the settlement is the husband is going to have her old job. What? Yeah, her husband is oh, going to yeah, have wait. her old job. I wonder what's going to happen there. I wonder if that guy's going to 
gonna off Baldwin. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> Hand him another loaded pistol, but by the wrong end. I don't know. Like <laughs> MC. That's awesome. Rust <laughs> remake prison version. <laughs> See, that's great. See, this is why I love my subscribers. Like, there's so many of my subs in there, and <laughs> they're wild. Like, I know Yuke is out there. I know Ron Wayne's out there. Misty's out yeah. there. MC. I don't know who else is out there. Yeah. I think Constitutional Carpenter is out there. Half um, snipers here. <laughs> oh, ha dude, you need to talk to Half Mile. I just did a live with Half Mile the other day. Oh, was and that right? it was a super fun live. Nice. Um, He's in California, so he's got the same restrictions. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah. And <laughs> so, but he competes um, in pistol and stuff like that. And great. Dude, like, it's super cool talking to him. He's such a nice guy, man. Exactly. Ron Wayne is an awesome guy. I highly recommend anybody that likes shorts of just watching somebody shoot a firearm, go check out Ron Wayne. Like cool, that's man. literally the niche of it. He just shows the firearm and only shoots the firearm. He doesn't talk about it. It's just functionality of the firearm. So he's clearly not monetized. <laughs> well, so this yeah. is the wild thing about it. Um, Ron Wayne has like 10,000 subs. Right. But he doesn't have the watch hours. Mm. So like I'm, oh, I'm going to stream all of his stuff in a playlist tonight. And okay. just let it play through to help him get his hours. Mm -hmm. I can cast it to my TV down here and just let him get his hours. Oh, I you know see. I mean? That's a lot of hours yeah. to get to. Yeah, I don't know how many he's at now, but... Hmm. I mean, hmm. there's no reason why he shouldn't be with the amount of subs he has. I mean, he should well, be it's, monitored. It's hard to say, you know, like... the. As soon as you figure you're getting close, uh, YouTube will probably move the goalposts and and uh, just keep. Yeah, you used to a thousand and a thousand, right? I I don't even know. I know uh, a thousand subscribers, and then um, I'm not sure about the hours. I never, you know what? I never paid attention to any of that stuff at all um, until uh, until Chris and I really got going with uh, ballistically speaking. Um, it was all, you know, this is just, um, fun and, and sort of novelty for us, I guess you'd, you'd describe it as, and, um, we figured we were sitting around bullshitting about guns and hunting and all that kind of stuff anyway. So we might as well put it on the air and see what kind of, uh, what kind of people we'd get watching <laughs> that had nothing yeah, just, better to do on a Friday or Saturday night. And just have fun with it. That's the best thing about yeah. it. Like Absolutely. you and Chris are a lot like how I am with my channel. I literally use my channel just to have fun with it. Meet people, yeah. talk to people, engage with people. Because believe yeah. it or not, I normally stay in my own little bubble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Yeah, I'm a bubble person too. Should we start a group? I mean, we could, but you're so far away. <laughs> Well, the world, the world is so small now. The, the world is, is on your doorstep. No I'll get in my there. Tesla. You get in your Tesla and we'll right. figure out how many stops each of us have to make before we run our batteries dead. And that's where we'll link up. <laughs> no, I'm uh, in turn. I'll leave a day late. You'll get stuck at the... I'll, I'll leave a day later because I know you're going to get stuck at the border. <laughs> well, you know what? Going down isn't such a big deal. But even for Canadian citizens coming back, it's a pretty damn good big deal. Why is it so hard to come back to where you're from with a Canadian passport to come back in to Canada? Well, do they really not want you guys there? <laughs> how do I how do I say this? We don't fit. Uh, no, I better not say it. There's, 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 a, there's a lot to it. There's uh, our, especially our current government likes to see, uh, maybe I better not say that either. <laughs> Don't get yourself in trouble. <laughs> oh no. It's uh, how do I say people like me come under more scrutiny than others. How's that? I mean, that works. It's kind of the same way here. Like um, in my region where I live, 
like I'm the adversary guy that you wouldn't expect to be into the firearms and be as good as I am in the competitive area because mm. I'm covered in tattoos. My ears are stretched and I normally dress like I'm homeless everywhere I go. <laughs> like, like Kentucky Fish and Wildlife came up to me, I guess it was a couple weeks ago. Um, and so I was out fishing, obviously. And Kentucky Fish and Wildlife came up to me, wanted to check my driver's license. I'm wearing basketball shorts, flip flops. Right. And have a fish pole in my hand. And I'm like, hey, dude, by the way, I am concealed carrying because Kentucky, when you're concealed carrying, you, when you're approached by an officer or pulled over, or whatever, you have to declare your firearm. It's Kentucky right. state law. Sure. And he was like, where are you carrying at? I was like, don't worry about it. I'm just carrying a firearm. I'm just telling you. He's right. like, no, I'm seriously curious because you're wearing basketball shorts and flip flops. <laughs> yeah, right. like, Where'd you stuff that thing, son? <laughs> it was in my prison wallet. <laughs> um, oh, now, him and I had a conversation after and it was all good and dandy, but. <laughs> so concealed carry down there um uh, what uh, i suppose what what are the rules around that uh, the stipulations for uh concealed carry are there there's got to be restrictions of some sort um uh, talk about some of the bylaws i'm sure there's there's different areas around uh, different towns and that 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 have bylaws that don't necessarily reflect what the state laws are um, you, you get that all the time, I'm sure. But uh, kind of describe that for us if you want, if if you could, please. Especially as okay. Canadians. All right. So I'm going to put in a disclaimer first before I go into it. I'm not an attorney. This is not legal advice. And if you steal legal advice from me, you are <laughs> stealing. And I will, I will make it very known that you are stealing if you're taking legal <laughs> advice from me because I'm not an attorney. However, all right. So, <laughs> so such a, such an American approach to this. <laughs> I mean, it is litigious. America, America. <laughs> I mean, Americans yeah. are so so happy. It's craziness. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um. So, so we have reciprocity here amongst states. Not every state. So, right. Like Illinois, New York, California. Uh, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Nevada, Washington, Oregon are not recognized under, and I think Alaska, are not recognized under Kentucky Concealed Carry, and their reciprocity goes both ways. They don't recognize ours, we don't recognize theirs, plain okay. and simple. Okay. Um. And then, so it allows you to basically carry anywhere besides government buildings, so i.e. postal, uh, banks, mm -hmm. things like that. And then Kentucky has bylaws that say you can't carry in anywhere that primarily sells alcohol. So a bar, a club, things like oh, that. Oh, I got you, yeah. And then... But see, we have a thing called Castle Doctrine. Yes. Um, and Constitutional Carpenter is correct. Most Southern states, it's constitutional carry. So you don't even have to really have um, a concealed carry, allegedly. Um, now, I still have a concealed carry because when I fill out a 4473 with Kentucky concealed carry, I don't have to go through a NICS check. Because the Kentucky State Police does a NICS check every 28 days on us. Oh, so what check now? NICS, um, National Intelligence Criminal oh. Services, FBI background check. So, so the alleged background check that doesn't exist. Yeah, it's called a NICS check. Ah, it exists. Isn't and we that feel interesting? Like, and we fill out a 4473. Like, everybody talks about, this is my biggest problem with politicians in the United States. Take this for what it is. Like, they say, oh, we have to close down boyfriend loophole. Well, 
I don't know what the fuck a boyfriend loophole is just because. Right. All right. So let's use for an example, my friend that lives with me. What they're trying to say is, well, because you reside in the same house, if she's not allowed to have a firearm, you're not allowed to have a firearm. So you mean to tell me that somebody that has no access to my vault, no access to any of my gun safes, no access to any of my firearms, I'm held at the same level that she is because she messed up and got a felony huh? or a domestic? What? Anyways. Hmm. They talk about that, and then they're like, oh, well, we have to close down the um, Brady loophole. The Brady loophole, do you know what the Brady loophole is? No That they're talking about? No. All right, so little American history. So do you know who the Brady Brady group is? No. We call them the Brady Bunch, but (laughs) like Moms Demand Action, Moms Against – it used to be Moms Against Drunk Drivers. Do you okay. remember that? Oh, yes, very much, yeah. So that's the Brady group, and it's now it's Moms Against Violence. But it's the exact same okay. people that run it. Okay, I wouldn't doubt um, it. So when the Brady Law got passed, it's the the Knicks check has, and it varies state by state. Every state's different. Okay. Um, but it's anywhere from three to five days, business days, to get back to you on your concealed or on your 4473. So if you get delayed, like Kentucky is three days, I believe it might be five. I think it's, I don't know it for sure because I've got a concealed carry. I don't worry about that. (laughs) Oscar says, those are not the moms that interest rooster. You're, you're right about that. Oscar. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) But in that law, in that law when it passed and they established that they had to put in there that because if not, you have somebody stuck in indefinite lingo of the FBI twiddling their thumbs if they're okay to have a firearm or not. Sure. Because let's just use for an example, there's another, I don't know, let's just say your name is Rooster Thompson and there's a Rooster Toms that... That your names are so similar that they right. delay you and your social. Do y'all have social security numbers? Yeah, we, we have our social insurance numbers. Yeah. Okay, so Same let's thing. say your. Let's say your social. Social insurance number, social security number, whatever is. One two three four five six seven eight nine. Right. Now, you're Rooster Thompson, but Rooster Tom's is two one three four five six seven eight nine. Mm-hmm. There's two numbers that are different, although they're the same numbers. They're at different sequences in the number, so you get delayed based upon that. And if let's just use, I don't, I don't know where y'all's like background checks or whatever go through, mm-hmm. but let's just say the Canadian Royal Police Force wants to twiddle their thumbs and say, "Well, you can't have As it till we get do. done with it." As they do, see, very much, yeah. So in the United States, because we have a Second Amendment, they can't just twiddle their thumbs the entire time. Mm. So, and now every state's different. There's some states that don't recognize that. They say, well, until the FBI comes back and says, yes, you can have it, you can't, you can't have it then. Like Tennessee, when I buy a firearm in Tennessee, I'm not allowed to buy a pistol. And I can buy a right. long gun. However, it costs me $10 to buy a long gun because they use a different version of Nix in Tennessee that charges you $10 every time you buy a firearm. Well, of course they would. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Interesting. But, every firearm you buy, hey? Mm-hmm. And then hmm. the other weird thing is, so even if I'm in Illinois, like it doesn't matter. If I go into a gun store in Illinois and I'm like, hey, I want this ship to my FFL in Kentucky. They cannot do it because I don't have a firearms identification card, which is not the same as a concealed carry for the state of Illinois. Right. Hmm. Interesting. And and being in Kentucky, I can't ship it to their FFL either. Hmm. That seems seems like an awful lot of, uh, uh, well, frankly, bullshit. It it is. It's just, 
it's bullshit because it's where these politicians don't understand how nor care the federal well that too like yeah like they want to say school shooters are based on the presumption of well they just stole it from their parent well that's fine but what are you doing to prevent that in the school system you're allowing the bullying to get out of hand to the point that that student feels like his only choice to make a stand is by yeah. taking innocent life. Now, do I think that's in okay? In some cases, yeah. Yeah, for sure. By no stretch of the imagination, do I think that's justified or that's okay? Like, yeah. I don't want anybody to get the wrong assumption there. Like, no. none of that is okay. I don't think I don't would. Yeah. Yeah. But as a school administrator, you're saying, oh, well, they're just picking with you. They're just playing with you. Mm -hmm. But you never know what somebody's going on outside of their life or outside of school. You never know. No, that's right. You don't know anybody's story. Mm -hmm. uh, you can you can be as critical as you want about anybody, uh, but you don't you don't necessarily know their story, what's going on at home or anything else. And 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 going back to the 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 school comment and the the bullying and all that kind of stuff, um, that has a. <laughs> And, and I assume that you were talking about the government. They're not doing anything. And maybe I'm wrong with that assumption. But No, I'm uh, not talking about the government. I'm talking, okay. well, well, in some regards, I am talking about the government because you pay moms <laughs> and stuff like that to live in a broken home. And you want to say, well, it's all the dad's fault that he's not there. But you're not looking at the realistic part of it. <laughs> Coop. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're not looking at the realistic part of it that you're making the mom and the dad not want to be with each other and raise a child in a broken home because a child is nothing more than a profit margin for the U.S. government. Yeah, it's We can get more debt off this little fucker that has no idea what's going on because mm -hmm. he's another number to us. That is an insanely broken system. That, that is absolutely it is. wild. You know, I, I tried to uh, to parse that whole thing for the longest time um, where and, and I'm still that guy. I'm still that personal accountability guy uh, that no matter what uh, the system uh, looks like, how however it serves you or doesn't serve you, you still have personal responsibility. You make your own damn oh. choices. You make your life. However, there are 100%. incentives that that is really bending people's perceptions of uh, personal responsibilities and that right absolutely i i think <laughs> mental health is a major issue like when i grew up so i am obviously younger than probably the majority of the audience here like i am younger i, I was i was i was thinking to myself tread lightly you son of a bitch <laughs> well, I, mean, I thought you were like, going to say, I'm obviously younger than you. <laughs> but I mean, which so is true. I, but <laughs> I graduated in 2008. Okay. And it was not abnormal for the guys on the rifle team to have our rifles in the vehicle. Yeah, I know. But now you look at it and it's like, holy fuck, he's got a gun at school. Let's call in SWAT. Let's call in this, that, or the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, even now for. Like in the United States, like I grew up carrying a firearm or a, <laughs> like, I mean, I had a, I had a rifle in my vehicle during high school. Um, and I had a shotgun because I shot on the school rifle team and the school shotgun team. Wow. And like, I only had it on the days that we were going to matches. Like I didn't take yeah. it every day, obviously. Right. Yeah. But if we had a match after school, like, yeah, we took our firearms to school. It wasn't out of the normal. Like, yeah, when we got there, maybe the principal was like, hey, just bring them into our office where they're here or bring the ammo to us or whatever right. have you. Yeah, yeah. That way, the presumption of, I guess, malice was eliminated. Maybe that's the best way to put it. Yeah. But now, like, a kid can't even be like, oh, well, I went and shot guns with my dad this weekend. It was really cool. We had a good time. He's going to be in the principal's office. Needs, being yeah. like, All of a sudden he needs counseling and, and security yeah. and everything else, right? You know, I, I can't help but think that, that a lot of this uh, 
like these school shootings and that uh where a kid feels he has no other choice or or gets uh uh, gets angry to the point where he picks up a, a gun uh, and and does something about it or attempts to do something about it. Um, I think uh, it's a mental health issue. Like we're not addressing well, the real problem of it. We're there's sugarcoating bullshit instead of addressing it. I, I don't disagree with you, but I think there's been so much um, uh, so much focus on. Uh, how do I say, person-to-person -person violence and bullying and stuff like that. You know, it used to be that if you had a beef with me, if I was picking on you or being a general asshole to you or whatever, if you had enough, truly had enough, you got to that point, you just kicked me in the nuts and I backed off or we had it out or our dads would have it out or whatever. You know, it was good, clean um leveling of the playing field however you want to describe it um oh absolutely and, and i don't think it's necessarily any any more access to firearms because like you're saying about when you were a kid uh at school shit you had the thing there at, at school two to three times a week yeah it uh, was know, by not what you're normal. describing yeah it wasn't abnormal for <laughs> us to have them at school yeah. Half mile sniper, you're exactly right. A good clean fist fight. There's not a damn thing wrong with it. And and you know what? It's part of the natural order as far as I'm concerned. And Absolutely. I'm not just saying that because I was always one of the bigger kids. Um <laughs> and willing to fight, I guess. But um, you know, I mean, there are there are equalizers uh that I think general society has taken away from us. Uh, because it's bad. It's you know you, you shouldn't touch someone, you, much less hit them. That's just bad and barbaric. And and we're better than that as a society. So you leave that kid stew for weeks and months and years, possibly until he finds he has no other choice. There's nobody he feels. There's nobody willing to help him, or the help that he's had is insufficient or absolutely fucking worthless. And 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 liberal teachers sit around and do nothing and say oh talk it out or i don't even have time for you what choice does he feel he has left that's that's i think i think that's another component uh to the to the mental health thing and and you're absolutely right there's <laughs> mental health issues now like this goddamn thing mm -hmm. and and what we're talking on right now the internet i i still maintain that those are the two worst things to happen to mankind like I'm I'm a big proponent of defunding the media. Like defund the media. Mm -hmm. I was wearing that shirt last night on <laughs> two different streams I was on. Right. And it literally it's got a TV on it and it says defund the media. Did you have and to tie back your beard for anybody to really notice that? I had to pull it back like this. <laughs> um, that glorious beard. <laughs> I mean, you know, in the warmth, it seems to grow pretty good. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm a little lagging. I, take a, I wash it with biotin shampoo. Listen, I don't want week. to get into that. No, no, sir. No, no <laughs> care products on this show. <laughs> we are no. manly men and we put grease on it. Good old petroleum grease and go. You got no, that? I, I got to brush it out every day and it's got to look oh. fluffy and luxurious. Oh. It's a flavor saver. Man. It's a flavor dad. saver. <laughs> it's a flavor saver, my guy. <laughs> no, so that was kind of the running joke. Um, when everybody's like, you gotta get half mile sniper on there on your channel, because he's got handle he's got like this great mustache. Oh, I mean, it no, comes, yeah. <laughs> comes down the side of his chin here, and it's a very nice mustache, and so <laughs> chainsaw bar oil yeah for the win <laughs> well so the most frustrating thing with like where i work i have to wear a beard net um oh, in the I facility i work in for sure. so like i have to fold it like this twist it fold it tied in a knot where i get it up like this and then i can put a beard net on <laughs> and it's awful or it's crunched up like this on my face so you have no idea what i'm talking about because you can't hear in there it's super loud. Oh, okay. 
Oh man. So do you think that, uh, uh, do you think that the school shootings are probably the, uh, most influential thing behind all the gun laws and all that kind of stuff? Um, yes, because it's the what was me attitude. Yeah. Um, we were actually talking about this last night too. Like I'm having a little bit of deja vu right now. Mm. The what was me attitude, like everybody's got this, oh, my life is so hard attitude. Life's a bitch. But yeah, but if you've never had any tools, uh, developed any tools, or nobody helped you develop any tools to uh, to deal with anything, well, what the fuck I, do you expect is going to happen? Kids I, raised I by fucking TV. I don't disagree with you there. And they watch it on the news, and they watch it on the media, and they watch this woe is me attitude where everybody gets a trophy because they participated in a sport. I'm sorry, but participation awards, I might be a millennial and everybody says it started with my generation, mm -hmm. but participation awards, yeah. you can take that shit and blow it because yeah. like there's no participation well, awards in life. You don't get a participation award. The, we are uh, messing with the natural order. I'm telling you, you, you know, my boys, when, uh, uh, when they were younger, and I couldn't believe this was happening when they started hockey. Um, that they would, they would only, they would only allow a five goal gap, you know, to be put up on the scoreboard. So, uh, you know, one team scores five goals, and, and and the other team scores none. If the other, if the the first team scored a sixth goal, well, they wouldn't put it up on the damn board mm -mm. because that would make someone feel bad. Well, so I've got so this, life skills, right? I've got this mentality and this might sound brutal when I say this, mm -hmm. but, and maybe it's, so I grew up extremely poor. Like I mm -hmm. will throw that out there. I grew up extremely poor. And so in order to make it to where I have, like I have busted my ass, I emancipated myself at 16 bought my first house, did everything on my own from 16, sent myself to college, yeah. everything. So I busted my ass. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and. Sorry, you Kaikazi, when I was, when I was talking about uh, being younger. So in the Victorian era, you know, uh, is there a timeout <laughs> button for, uh, for viewers on this damn thing? <laughs> Anyway, sorry, buddy. Go ahead. I want to get Yuka Kazi on a live stream. Like, <laughs> I would love to have Yuka on a live stream. He is a riot. I love it. Um, like, I'd love to get him and Half Mile together on my channel and just see what kind of wild stuff really comes out of his mouth. Like, I love it. I love it. He 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 literally beats the algorithm with the stuff that he talks about because it's super random, and I love oh, yeah. it. Um. <laughs> Because, I mean, you never know. But anyways, um, no, this whole participation award shit, like, um, I, I digress. And I'm like a squirrel right now. I'm, no, that's I'm fine. Yeah. I keep interrupting you. <laughs> um, I'm looking at all the clowns in the comments here. <laughs> see, it's great, though. Um, and But, I mean, we, we sit here and we take these participation awards and we tell a kid, Oh, well, you were just good enough to finish the season. Fuck that. If you weren't first, second, or third, you don't deserve shit, in my opinion. Well, you I know mean, what? Even I, I think you deserve a little bit of, listen, this is how you did this year. And yeah. you weren't first, second, or third. So what are you going to do about it for next year? Are, are you content with mediocrity? Or are you going to go out there and rip somebody's face off to win? Exactly. You know, I have those conversations with, with my boys even now. Um, and they're, they're partially victims of their surroundings where there's none of these kids are aggressive anymore. And I, I, I say kids, my oldest boy is 17 and uh, you know, watching them play sports, um, man, I'm telling you when I was that age, I would eat somebody's face for the fucking puck. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Just, but Man, I'm gonna hack you down because I want that puck. And but see, it's they don't a whole have any of that instinct. It is. It's a 
It's a totally different world. It's like, so weak. It's not even funny. No, and so like I grew up in a tobacco field. Like if you mm -hmm. know if anybody in here knows about growing tobacco, mm -hmm. they know how labor intensive it is. I bet. And our stepdad literally if we were like we're not going to do it, he was like then go sit out the truck, but if we don't get this work done, we don't eat tonight. Yeah. Amen. And Dude, I can remember I was in fifth grade of elementary school and I can still remember like me and my brothers, we got in a fight at the tobacco field. And dad said, y'all either finish it here yeah, or it's like, I'll beat up. your asses up and down the tobacco field. Then you're going to go home and I'm going to beat your ass again for letting me beat your ass first time. <laughs> and, and like we literally hashed it out there and then dad would separate us. He'd be like, all right, that's enough. I mean, it's, it's enough. Like, like it's done. It's over with. It's enough. Right. Now get back to work. Right. Yeah. And, shit to do. Yeah. Like, and it, it's different now. Like kids are so coddled these days. Like, so I'm very fortunate with um, my daughter being in the shooting sports. Right. Because. Yeah. So she had an advantage, and I'm not even going to lie. She had an advantage that a lot of kids didn't have mm -hmm. because of where I was in shooting sports right. and where I am now. Right. So, like, my sponsors literally were like, well, if you're going to bring your daughter, we want to provide her with this, that, and the third. And I told her, I was like, look, you're only getting this because of where I am. It's not that you earned it, so you need to represent, you need to represent right. Mm -hmm. And... And I know that sounds harsh and people might say, well, you're an asshole for telling your kid that. But now that she's 18 and she's moving up to women's division, right. all these companies are like, you're not running our stuff. You have to earn it at this point. Mm -hmm. We helped you this far. Now, yeah. if they decide when she signs up for women's division next season, if they decide, well, hey, we're still we still want our name on your jersey. We also want you running our rifles. We want you running our ammunition, so on and right. so forth. Right. That's because she's developed as a shooter and she's earned that recognition yeah. of, yeah. hey, I've got this. Mm -hmm. I didn't get this from <laughs> this, that, and the third. Does yeah. that make sense? No, that's, uh, we're on the same page here. Um, you know, and, and you think about, uh, uh, what do I say, personal satisfaction, uh, too. Um, and, and there's, I dare say most of these kids nowadays don't know what it is to work for something and and see the benefits of that. The victory exactly. is so much sweeter when you've worked hard for it. And and I don't think there's a lot that that uh, that have had that experience anymore. It, exactly. Like um you don't see this, oh well I busted my ass. Every day, I have blood, sweat, and tears, calluses, bruises, yeah. splinters, blisters from the years of practice that it yeah. has taken me to get to where I am. When I first got on my high school shooting team, I was literally the bench rider because I was that bad. Mm. I mean, I was <laughs> awful. And how did you feel about being there? It sucked, and I wanted... I wanted to be at the top. I wanted to be the guy that you called up and was like, hey, we need a clean set and we need it like two sets ago. Right. Right. And you didn't have anybody standing behind you, petting your hair, saying, you know what? You did the best you could. And that's that's it. That's OK. That's good enough. And, no, and, and, you know, somebody encouraging you to be happy with mediocrity and settling for that. And I mean, our rifle coach in high school, he was a mean son of a bitch. I will tell you that right now. He was fucking mean. Like, Let's get him on. So <laughs> I need to. I would love to have him on, especially. So he's followed me throughout my shooting career after high school oh, and in through right. college and where I am now. <laughs> and I'll I'll get a message from him every once in a while. And he's like, "Hey, what'd you do at that match? Why'd you go from tenth to twenty fifth?" What'd you do? Right. Right. He's like, don't make me come up there. Um, <laughs> Is that right? He's still playing coach. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
but we all have coaches in life, like no matter what it is, whether it's that uncle that you're super close with, that older brother, that stepdad, dad, we all have a coach. Like, right. do you watch Gen X talks at all? Uh, no. Okay, like, so are they, are they similar to the TEDx talks? You mean the, the, no, Gen X talk or what? No, Gen X talks is a guy. He's a Generation X guy, and him and his son literally started a YouTube channel. It's just shorts, oh, and man. but he does lives now. Like the dad does lives and literally gives dad advice. Okay. And so the son will come in and it'll be like, dad, I got a question for you. He's like, God damn it. I told you to get away from me with that fucking cell phone. What? And he's like, why? And he'll ask him questions like, why oh, is society so soft? Talking about right. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, well, this is why society is soft. And he just right. goes on this tangent and <laughs> yeah. it's great. Like, um, <laughs> and then, then he got into one about participation awards. Okay. And, he was like, people don't earn shit anymore. It's just like, I don't know. Do you follow Safety Doc? No, Have you ever listened I, to Safety Doc? No. Um, I highly recommend checking out Safety Doc. Okay. Um, so very, very nice guy. Extremely intelligent guy. And he, he really breaks down things in the psychology of a lot of it. And dude, super, super nice guy. Mm -hmm. um, he breaks down the psychology of things and he's written books and just super, super nice guy. Now, I will tell you his streams, he talks in a very monotone voice. So right. like it it can put you to sleep. Like it's not a jab on safety doc okay. or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're not prepared for that, it's gonna sound very mundane. Um, but just the intelligence of that man is, mm. I mean, it's perfect. Got, uh, got some Zen advice, does he? Yeah. Well, not even just Zen advice, just like life advice and the things he talks about and just the real life advice of where he's at. Um, I'm not sure what his doctorate's in. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. But he covers a lot of different topics and it's a really good conversation. That everybody mm -hmm. has with safety dog hmm. and just listening to him and his knowledge there is just phenomenal right wow. well you know what i, I think uh, there's stuff like what what you're talking about um that uh, a lot of people probably gloss over uh, anymore because a there's so much junk out there that you know uh, that appeal to uh the simplicity of the the mind in general anymore um it, it's just um the 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 zombie mind if you know what i mean that it is. And, and everything's so damn politicized that uh, it's sad, I think people like, tune out of uh you know really valuable stuff like like what you're talking about well and so it's literally just like how i don't know if you're a um joe rogan fan or not like yep. listen to his podcast or not yeah yep. um like where he breaks down where he's like i don't understand why anybody told millennials they could be anything they want and they can be a doctor because not everybody can be a doctor not everybody can be an attorney not everybody can be an engineer right. you have to have a general labor force of factory workers <laughs> lawn care landscape oil field workers and things yeah. like that. Not everybody's cut out to be yeah. a engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. Right. But instead colleges are selling this fake ID of participation awards for a bullshit degree yeah. that you know is not going to bring you any satisfaction in life because you're still going to be sitting there working in an oil field or a factory or a gas station because you have a, I don't know, what's a degree that's just like a bullshit degree that's not needed really for anything. Well, um, education's turning out to be that. Well, see, that's <laughs> where I differ because education has become so politicized now and Agreed. so so left wing that it 
it's no longer the same education school that I went to that you went to that was no. non-political. No. Right. Yeah. But that, my education that I went to was very non-political. Like they didn't talk mm-hmm. about gender studies. They didn't talk about religion to you. Like, but it wasn't abnormal to see your teacher praying in before she ate lunch. Like, yeah, but sure. they wouldn't talk to you about it. No, there you go. Right. Arts, yeah. like a, a liberal arts degree. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, philosophy. Yeah. I think philosophy is a vague one because you almost have to have philosophy if you're going to become like an ordained minister, like mm. a legit ordained minister. Right. Um, but I mean, an arts degree. And then they turn out working in a factory, but they spent four years of their life being told, oh, you can be anything you want after you get this degree. And now they're working in a factory. Yeah. And you know, that's not a jab at a factory worker. Like, don't take it that way. It's not a jab not at, at a all. factory worker. Not at all. Where do you get your shit? Who makes From that? From a factory? Exactly. From a factory? Yep. I mean, I yep. literally work in a factory in my field that I work in. <laughs> Like, yep. No, you know what? I see uh, that a lot in construction. And I've had these passionate discussions with uh, construction safety people that you realize that what you're doing is allowing any idiot to work in construction. Mm-hmm. Not everybody is cut out for construction. No. You got to have some damn common sense you got to have your wits about you and you got to be willing to work i mean that's you think about what construction's been uh, throughout history now in these last 20 years any snowflake can can work in construction because there's someone there to protect him exactly and, and put a bubble around him and tell him it's okay just because you didn't get that done today doesn't mean you're a bad person or shitty at your job. Well, in fact, it does mean you're shitty at your job. Well, it's that what was me work in attitude. Retail. It's that fucking what was me attitude that, well, no matter what I do, I'll never be as good as him. I have to keep up with him. I have no. to do what he's doing. Why does he get this promotion and I don't? It's literally that what was me attitude well, that so the many people have. Yep, exactly. Absolutely. Mom, mom says I should have got that job. <laughs> well, right? well, well, Mama what said Gatorade. So. Work? Yeah. What did, What did you do on the floor or in the field that proved that you should have got that promotion or whatever? Yeah. Because like, the guy next to you did. I guess he busted his ass, and you sat outside and smoked. Yeah, like Mama it, said, alligators. Were, Mama said alligators were angry because their mandibula oblongata was off. <laughs> Like got, what the they fuck got does so mama many know? teeth and no toothbrush? Yeah, I mean, what the fuck does mama know? <laughs> Funny. Well, mama knows a it's, lot, and uh, it's just mama's generally smarter than me. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't get me yeah. wrong. Like, moms are intelligent human beings. Like that's not a jab at moms at all. But no, it's like all. no, uh, moms. Uh, well, you know, moms care a little bit too much. Uh, I think often. Uh, and dads just sit back and, and realize that uh, there's no sense arguing with mom because she's just going to shut them down anyway. <laughs> mom is always right. Well, is she, though? Allegedly. Allegedly. I like that. <laughs> um, well, Yenzi says, Mama said life's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> But, I mean, everybody just feels so entitled, like you said. Like, nobody wants to work for anything. Like, so... Nope. Have you heard this new thing? What they're saying is called silent quitting at work? Oh, yes. Yeah. Doing exactly what your job tells you to do. That's apparently silently quitting. But I've always heard of that as doing what the fuck your job is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, and nobody's. I shouldn't say nobody. Not neither one of us should say nobody. Can't pay to everybody with the same brush. But um, there's so many now not willing to go the extra mile uh, to well, a ensure they keep a job, 
B, uh, advance in a job, or C, have that personal satisfaction that you do your job well and you deserve to be there. Now, people just think, I deserve to be there simply because they gave me a job. Exactly. It's like jobs requiring people to have a degree in something. Like They don't care what the degree is in to become a supervisor. So you want to tell me that you've got some guy with whatever, a mm -hmm. a associate's degree in liberal arts. Right. It's over a engineering department telling the engineering department what they need to do that literally spent six years of their life in college to get a degree in engineering. That's not talking about the specific type of engineering you got, whether it be mechanical, right. um, chemical, yeah, you're or just, bio. Yeah. yeah. Like, so you want to tell me the liberal arts guy knows more about engineering than the guy that literally went to college for six years to do it? What the mm -hmm. fuck? Then why am I here? Like, if he knows that much more, then why am I here? Right. You know what I mean? Yep, yep for sure. It, it dumbfounds me. It's like, yeah. that... Yeah, and that then is, you, then you bring in uh, you have employers bringing in other measures to how do I say level the playing field? I should probably leave it at that, but I probably won't. Um, you know, <laughs> you've got to you've got to have a certain component of a certain type of person. Um, otherwise, you're not a fair employer. So yeah, uh, you know, and it doesn't it doesn't always um, uh, result in poor company performance uh, overall, um, but companies do make exceptions to fulfill um, quotas, let's say. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not always best candidate anymore. No. That's why uh, we're seeing companies struggle now. Exactly. And, and like honestly, uh, their personnel uh struggle because of that because and, and i've called I've, I've talked about it for years um I, I i describe it as uh dilution of knowledge and you and you can apply it in so many different ways where you know well i'll tell you about a friend of mine uh who is a nurse and she's in um uh, she does a lot of training of uh students Okay, so the students go in the hospital, this, this group of students, and what ends up happening, the long and the short of it, what ends up happening is um, the top several students are selected for uh, advancement, whether that's higher or further education or whatever the case may be. Now, out of that group, the top students selected are not necessarily... Um, shining stars let's say so and and i had this discussion with this friend of mine and i said and because she was expressing um um some real frustrations with what she was seeing coming from the schools and i said you realize all the frustrations you're having now for, for from uh students uh uh lack of knowledge or lack of give a shit uh is is then at some point going to become the norm okay mm -hmm. those students come up into her position eventually they start training other groups of students and and because that person isn't necessarily like i said before i don't know uh, how else to put it but the shining star the most intelligent the most capable uh you know the hardest worker sort of thing uh, because she doesn't hold uh, as much value for that position as the previous generation. Well, that next generation is quite likely to be um, uh, even poorer yet, and you can you can you can you can envision that uh, sort of dilution effect. Then what are we exactly. going to end up with in a, in a couple more generations? Fucking idiots! Absolutely. And well, we're, we're seeing the effects of that now. Well, here's the scary thought about it. So I graduated 
what, 14 years ago, okay. 15 years ago. Poor My son. daughter was doing the same schoolwork that I did the year I graduated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you want to tell me that history hasn't changed in 15 years? What right. Like, yeah. we're not going to cover the fact that things have changed in life. <laughs> even, even this new way of math. Have you seen this new way of math that they're doing? This oh, common I've heard, I've heard a little bit about it, but I know nothing about it, really. Do, it's a reach around way of figuring out what two plus two actually equals four <clears throat> or can't, seven plus 13. Can't wrap like, my head around that yet. It's like, what? They're not <laughs> taught that like nine times seven, you can literally do it on your fingers and put down the seven number and you've got it. Well, you know, back in my day, uh, back in the Victorian times, um, Kids that did adding or multiplication with their fingers were mired because, like, Jesus Christ, you don't actually know that. You got to use your fingers. You know, so so there, again, is another sort of dilution. Um, the way you were taught was different than the way I was taught. I got fucking rulers on my knuckles if I didn't know the answer just like that when the teacher came around. Well, yeah, like when we were in elementary school, we went to a Catholic school and I can remember mm-hmm. the nuns like coming by and literally smacking our hands with a ruler if we were yeah. bad. Yeah. I can remember in middle school, the middle school te- the middle school principal literally had a paddle if we were bad at school where he would beat our ass. <laughs> and, and so like, there's a caveat to that because like my mom worked for the school system. Right. And so like any there was no getting away with it. Be like, oh, that didn't happen at school, mom. What are you talking about? They literally picked up the phone and called her classroom and was like, this is what your child did today. And we're going to bust his ass for it. And I knew what that meant as soon as I got off the bus at home. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Because first, like we'd get off the bus at the farm. (laughs) And our aunt would always be at the bus stop especially if we got in trouble Mm -hmm. she would beat our ass with a switch like kids these days don't even know what a switch is (laughs) she would beat our ass with a switch and then she'd be like go find your dad and he would dude you could hear the belt loops snap (laughs) when he whipped his belt off kids don't know true fear anymore no well that's that's exactly it yeah like yeah, I used, to, sure. I used to get oh. petrified. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> like I died a couple of times and my parents told me to get up and walk it off. <laughs> That's funny. Give you a kick in the ribs. What's your problem? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, let's, remember- let's uh Let's reel this back a little bit. Oh, uh, sorry, we're gonna. We're, no, that's all right. We're gonna wrap it up a little in a little while. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, dragging my ass today. I've been getting up at three thirty in the morning for the last several mornings. And, and why uh, do you want to do that? I don't know. It's just uh, my brain says it's time to go, and it's time to go. So I get up and have breakfast and go to the office and get at it. So does but, that uh, does that get easier the older you get? I don't think so. I don't no. think so. You know what? Um, um, it might get, it might be easier to lay there in the morning when you do wake up and go, well, this isn't going anywhere, so I might as well get my ass out of bed. It does get easier. But when you roll out of bed and everything creaks and groans, that does not get easier. Well, <laughs> yeah, like I've had five knee surgeries, so I get that. Yeah. <laughs> Waking up in the morning, having to lay there for a minute, be like, all right, do I really want to get up yet? Because I know what's coming when I get up. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, you know what? I was just wondering, uh, you're talking about, we, we were talking about concealed carry before we went, went off on a tangent. Uh, what do you carry? So ironically enough, I carry a Taurus TX-22. Okay. Why is that ironic? Because it's 22 long, but I absolutely love The Taurus TX-22. If I had to pick a pistol to literally have for the rest of my life, and like that was the only pistol I could ever have, it would be a Taurus TX-22. It is extremely light. 
okay. extremely easily concealable. Right. And it's extremely reliable. Mm-hmm. The first time I shot it, I put over a thousand rounds through it, trying to break it. Because I, mm-hmm. I wanted to figure out I wanted to figure out where the break point was. <laughs> and it didn't fail. Huh. And dude, I'll run that and I can run it as fast as I can run my race pistols. Is that right? Oh dude, it's a great for for a sub three hundred dollar pistol. Like people mm-hmm. people might be like, oh well it's a cheap <laughs> pistol, I'll never trust my life with it. Right. I've got race pistols that don't run as good as that. Is that right? Our our yeah. buddy Jens, he's uh, he's very much. Um, well, he 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 doesn't appreciate twenty two long rifle like some people. I can tell you that. So Jens Jens says sounds like expensive dry fire. <laughs> I so love I have to ask. Point. Yeah, I know. You know what? It's it's uh, it's it's getting uh, more popular all the time. Uh, well, but I got to ask, cheap. sure. Um, and it might sound like a stupid question, but humor me. Your prime reason for carrying a pistol. Mm-hmm. What is it? What is it? Yeah. Make sure I get home. Okay. And you rely on a twenty-two long rifle for that. Yeah, so in my region, now when I go back home to Wisconsin, I carry a nine because yeah. it's colder. Okay. But here in Kentucky, it's not that cold. We don't have bear. I mean, there's bears here, but like the odds of you seeing a bear here is probably the odds of you seeing a jackalope. <laughs> like you're mm-hmm. not going to see bears where I live in Kentucky. It doesn't get sure. that cold here. Like sure. the coldest it gets is like negative five. So everybody still just wears a hoodie. Right. A 22 is enough to get through a hoodie. Right. Um, like round so, capacity alone. Okay. And the weight. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Uh, you know, there's, there's always been, or for as long as I can remember, at least anyway, that debate between nine and 45. But I think a lot of that depends on, uh <laughs> Oscar, I've drunk with with rooster. Jackalopes are a possibility. I think he's right. <laughs> um, you know, I think it depends on uh what your goal is uh if you encounter um some trouble, let's say. Um, you know, to me, uh what it sounds like your objective is, I suppose, uh with your 22. Uh, if you do encounter some trouble is, um, how, how, how do I say, uh, dissuading somebody from doing something, uh, well, something worse, let's maybe, um, you know, if, if you can put a little bit of sting in them, uh, and I'm not saying that, that 22 can't kill a person. Uh, but I would, I would say, and especially given the amount of videos out there showing a, a cop with a nine mil, dumping an entire mag into somebody and them not stopping. So 22 to me uh, seems like uh, just sort of discouraging someone for from doing something worse than what they've already been doing. What what caused you to uh, pull out that 22 in the first place? Well, so a little caveat that a lot of people don't know about me is I come from a law enforcement background. Okay. So I know how to seek cover and I know how to get behind cover. Okay. Most most people in a high stress situation are gonna freak out. Amen. Like, like yep. let's face reality. If yep. you're in a true high high stress situation, you're mm-hmm. going to freak out. Right. If you can seek cover and hold out for long enough for them to get to that reload you have that advantage because they might only have nine or 10 rounds in their magazine, unless they're carrying a, like a Glock 19, a Glock 17, whatever. Yeah. But you're still only talking 15, 15 or 17 rounds. Right. You have that window of, Mm -hmm. okay, I've got this second. Unless you're getting into a gunfight with somebody that 
has like some serious trigger time and some serious training with magazines. Right. Which is, which is a possibility it as is, is the, 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 the possibility that there is no cover. Uh, you know, there, there, yeah. you know, uh, there, there's so many variables. Um, yeah. There, it just, it, it just seems interesting to me that you'd rely on something uh, that level of power. Well, I also run Ely ammunition in my pistols. So I'm running mm. true supersonic ammo, like okay. the Ely Red Box. So okay. it's still running, what, 1,500 feet per second right. to 1,700 feet per second? Sure. I mean, it's still screaming out of a 22. Mm -hmm. Energy and speed are what you need in defensive situations. Right. Now, if I know I'm going somewhere, like let's say I'm going up to Indiana, Ohio, um, somewhere where it gets very cold and you know the clothing is going to be thicker, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to carry a 22 because that's stupid. Okay. That's asking okay. for a problem. Okay, yeah. That but given my demographic, it doesn't get that cold here. I mean, you're talking a hoodie most of the time. Um, mm hmm like, like you don't need that extra penetration. Maybe it's the best way to put it. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit for sure. Um, you know, Oscar, uh, Oscar made a comment a little while back that, that he prefers, uh, 375 H and H, but, uh, proves to be somewhat unwieldy in, in, uh, <laughs> in a concealed, uh, uh, situation. <laughs> like but, I've got things, I've got pistols all the way up to 50 AE. Sure. I've got 44 Magnums. I've got 357 Magnums, 458, 458 lots, 458 SOCOMs and pistols, sure. like mm -hmm. legitimate pistols. Right. And it's like, why do I want to carry this big lunking ass pistol when I can carry something yeah. less than two pounds? You know what? In in my mind, um, okay. On the on the one hand, um, how do I say? If if I'm going out there uh, carrying something, anticipating that there that there may be trouble. Or mm -hmm. I want to. I just. I just want to be prepared for any sort of trouble that might come my way. I'm. In in my mind, I think I'd be all fucking business, no fuck around. Uh, just get it done. Now well, that there is may, a that that my mind may change if I was ever in that that situation where I could actually. Uh, carry a pistol for defense. Um, I don't know. You know, does does light and handy uh, and and quantity um, it will it be enough in most situations that I might encounter, or or do I want to go with something clunky, heavy, and fuck you? Well, do, so do you understand what I mean? I do. So like a lot of people not, might not realize this, but I have like little hands. Okay. So a full size pistol, I can run a full size pistol very proficiently. Sure. However, it is not as easy for me in a high stress situation to control a full size okay. pistol. Okay. Yeah. Because of how little my hands are and how right. snappy a full size pistol is. Okay. Can I run one very proficient? Yeah. I mean, I can. Right. I wouldn't want to be at the receiving end of any of them, whether it be any a, of them. Exactly right. Yeah. A seventeen, a pellet rifle, all the way up to a three seventy five H and H fifty BMG. I don't want to be at the receiving end of any of it. <laughs> no. But if I'm going to have to choose to what I know with my little hands and like even my daughter, like she's got little hands too. Like, what sure. happens if, like, yeah, she can run a race pistol, mm -hmm. and she can run a combat pistol, but she's got okay. little hands, too. So what happens yeah. if it's a situation that, right. oh. She has that, to pick that up. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want to have to rely on the fact that, okay, well, I've got a forty four Magnum on my hip. I'm wilder. 
whatever you want to call it. Um, sure. I don't want to have to rely on my 18 year old daughter that weighs 102 pounds to try to manhandle a 44 Magnum. Does that make sense? Yep. No, it does. There's, there's a lot of it that absolutely does make sense. Uh, I just wanted your perspective on it because I, I because we can't uh, carry at all uh, in Canada. Uh, I have no reference. Um, so my, my perception is, uh, that I would, I would want something, um, that, uh, like I say, I, the way I put it all business, you know, well, uh, if, if I'm in a sticky better. situation, uh, then I want it taken care of quickly. But bigger is not always necessarily better either. No, no, you're right. Um, so there's an old saying that ounces equal pounds and pounds equal pain. Sure, sure. And it's, there's a lot of truth to that. Sure. Yep. Um, I don't know how much anybody in the chat carries. I don't know where everybody's demographic is, if it's primarily right. Canada, if it's right. primarily the United States, England, Europe. Mm -hmm. and, and so I don't know if everybody can can carry concealed or can carry a firearm outside of their house loaded or anything like that. But mm -hmm. I mean, for me in my region, cause I do wear basketball shorts every day. I wear mm -hmm. flip flop. I wear my tactical flip flops every day. I don't care <laughs> if it snows or not. I wear flip flops <laughs> and basketball shorts. Right. right. If you see me in pants and shoes, like, like, you know, like, some serious shits like going on. Cause I don't wear that stuff. Right. And that's, that's me. It's funny. Uh, I think about that stuff all the time when I go somewhere, uh, tie up your goddamn shoes or boots, whatever you're wearing. Cause you never know what you may encounter. Uh, you're going to chase some motherfucker down or stand and fight or whatever. Uh, you will never catch me out unless I'm camping, uh, with flip flops. Well, see, so the difference with me with flip flops is I don't like shoes. If I can walk, if I could literally work okay. and go to the store barefooted, I would not wear shoes. I know that sounds very <laughs> Kentucky of me to say that, but it is the truth. I do not like tennis shoes. I've okay. never liked tennis shoes in my entire life. Yeah. I don't like yep, bleeding. I, I don't like pants. So mm -hmm. I'm wearing basketball shorts. Well, I can't carry a heavy ass pistol on basketball shorts. It'll literally pull my, my shorts to my ankles. Okay. Okay. And so I need that lightweight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you take eight rounds of nine mil equals the weight of 22 rounds of 22. Mm -hmm. So I think that's yep. what it equals out to. No, I get you. And, and I, with all this talk, I realize that uh, chances of encounters like that where, where uh, you really have to get scrappy uh, are pretty rare. Um, so, you know, it doesn't, it, unless somebody has been in it, uh, they don't necessarily, um, prepare for it. Yeah. Like you even know. when I was in law enforcement, um, so I worked special reserve team, um, which was kind of like a SWAT team in its own. Mm -hmm. Like it was just special reserve team. Like sure. when we got called out, it was like, that was final chance like there was no more mm. of a standoff like when we got called we were going we were breaching a door we weren't sitting around waiting like you're coming with us one way or the other it's either mm. a toe tag or you're coming with us it doesn't matter right. right so so i mean i've carried everything from a 45 on my hip when i was in law enforcement all the way down to a backup 38 on my ankle and sure. then carrying an AR and wearing level four plates and all that shit. Right. All that shit adds up and all that weight adds up. Mm -hmm. like, oh, there's no question. For sure. Like, for sure. And so, I mean, it's just, it's wild, like, demographically speaking. Because it, it's hard to, the mindset's hard to understand. <laughs> You kite Kazi with another zinger. Bending is not so secretly a hobbit. Viking beard, 
tiny hands, barefoot all the time. We're on to you, Frodo. <laughs> Well, I, my house Listen, may or may no not be under the ground. Night. My house <laughs> may or may not be under the ground. So, <laughs> so that's not too far fetched. It might have grass growing on the roof because I have not cleaned my gutters in a while. <laughs> um, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right. Yeah. Well. Thanks. I just wanted to know what. Uh... Uh, Oscar's yeah. impressed that I even know what a hobbit is. I saw one one time and I shot him with a 45. Oh. <laughs> no, you I just wanted to know what your, <laughs> um, what but, your perspective I mean, was on it. It's, it's interesting to hear. Yeah, I mean, there's advantages and disadvantages <laughs> to everything. There's the advantage Absolutely. of only carrying the Glock 19. Like, there's a true advantage to only carrying a Glock 19 because everybody has a Glock 19 or a Glock 17. Sure. sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. the truth of the matter is, well, not everybody, I don't, but um, everybody generally has something that takes a Glock mag. In a shit right. hits the fan scenario, you're going to want something that takes a <laughs> Glock mag. I have one thing that yeah, takes a Glock mag. Is that right? Yeah. It's, yeah, uh, and you know what? I had this this conversation a couple of times too uh, about uh, you know like nine versus forty or forty five or whatever, and and uh, same same kind of ideas. What you're talking about? If the shit really did hit the fan, what's the most common out there? At least in in Canada, anyway, it's clearly nine mil. So, exactly. um, like, pardon me. No, I'm just saying exactly like three hundred eight nine mil six five Creedmoor. Uh, mm -hmm. two, two, three, five, five, six. Yeah, that's your common yeah. calibers in the world. Yep, yep, for sure. Yeah, you'd um, be silly to be without one or carry one or whatever in that situation. Yeah, like, I mean, should hit the fan tomorrow. Would I take my race pistols with me? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I'm right. not. Right. Because I've only got a set number of magazines for them. They don't take right. lock mags. Right. And who else has canics? Yeah. Not a lot of people have a canic. Yeah. Not a lot of people have a shadow system. Not a lot of people <laughs> have action expresses. So. No, that's uh, that's exactly right. Those are uh, those AEs are more, uh, especially up here, anyways, more of a novelty item than anything. Or Gerson's. Like, when was the last time you heard anybody say that? Oh, well, I just bought a Gerson. Like oh, I've presuming heard it a few times up here, but it's not it's, that uh, common. I I don't know. You know what? Uh, they're they're on the cheaper end of things here. Uh, so I think I think a lot of guys have sort of migrated that way, especially new uh, shooters. Uh, I think you know up here. Um, there's now the hand handgun freeze, uh, as well as the the import ban. So the pistols that we have in Canada are all it's ever going to be in Canada unless something really changes with the with uh, the government. Um, oh, they were so capping the market. Say again. He capped the market. Remember? You know, whatever the however the fuck he explained <laughs> it. But, <laughs> you know, there, it's it's uh, realistically uh, Justin Trudeau is is the uh, the greatest handgun salesman in Canadian history. Um, because there's there are people who uh, never bothered with handguns before now buying handguns uh, while they can because they realize that that uh, uh, they may never get the chance again. Uh, so Gersons um, are have been available, and I think a lot of guys picked them up. I mean, everybody picked up whatever they could mm -hmm. uh, this last little while. So. And I have no idea, uh, you know, uh, quantities uh, that ever got to Canada. But well, it's like uh, we were talking about the AR-15 that you guys developed mm -hmm. for up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically an AR-15. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that concept is phenomenal. Like, mm -hmm. I love it. Right. I absolutely. Because it's totally different than anything else than what you'll see in the United States. Right. Now, it might not be as reliable as, let's say, a Daniel Defense mm -hmm. or a Wilson Combat, 
that's basically how I understand it from Chris is it's not as reliable as this other stuff that he had. Well, I think there's some of them that are going through some growing pains, you know, mm -hmm. stuff that has long ago been worked out of the AR 15s. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, these, these newly developed, uh, rifles, uh, have some bugs to work out. Uh, uh, for the most part, they're okay, but it's still development uh pains yeah. right yeah like i would love to be able to get one of those down here in the u.s just to be able to run it and <laughs> ron wayne says i lost all my guns in a coyote accident can Sorry i give a very that. special shout out to ron wayne absolutely like, so ron wayne i'm doing the very first live interview with ron wayne tomorrow night on my channel but everybody, please go check out Ron's YouTube channel. Watch his shorts. Watch his videos. It It is some of the... Because he's literally showcasing the firearm. It's no opinion with it. It's nothing. It's literally functionality of the firearm and the firearm working. What's life Ron without an opinion anymore? That's, and, that's uh, pretty rare. I'll do, and it's great. Like, I don't, I do not enjoy firearm content on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I will not lie to you. I do not enjoy it. It is not what I like. Right. Um, and I just don't enjoy it. I, <laughs> I'm not even going to sugarcoat bullshit because I, there's no point in it. Yeah. But I do watch Ron Wayne's stuff because it's very unopinionated. It's purely functionality of the firearm. I don't get caught up in the politics of stuff. I don't get caught up in the other stuff i've got a buddy that calls me every time they start talking about a new law that they're going to try to pass hmm. he works in the firearms industry and i have told him like it's enough like i'm tired of hearing about it yeah it's it's why i follow hootie well, it's Who. everywhere like it's truly why i follow hootie who also is because there is no it's black and white like there's no sugarcoating bullshit there it's literally just the functionality, and this is what sure. the firearm will do, and that's what I enjoy. Right. I don't yep. enjoy I the half-mile sniper is the exact same way. Mm -hmm. It's truly the functionality of the firearm, not the, not the political aspect of it, mm -hmm. and I love that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, so <laughs> those cool. three channels, if anybody doesn't follow them, I highly recommend go check those guys out. We'll check half them out, too, sniper, sure. Half-mile sniper. Gun Doctor, Ron Wayne, Hootie Who. I mean, y'all seen Hootie Who down in my chat. Yeah, yeah you Like, bet. super, <laughs> super nice guy. You Half you. mile, super great guy. Ron Wayne, great guy. Nice. All right, well, we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, just wanted to give a shout out to, uh, first of all, uh, the people that have been with us since almost day one, uh, certainly with uh, uh, Ballistically Speaking, uh, we've got Shane and Steve with EM Precision Rifles, Miles Carey and Cappy with Call Sign 66, Duncan and Rob at, at Bolt Action Coffee, Phil Adell at Odell Engineering, Doug and Niza with March Scopes Canada, Vanya and Carly with Apex Optics, and Oscar with Ribstone Gunsmithing. Uh, also... Um, Oh, who the who the heck am I missing here? Uh, guard dog inserts uh, in Regina, Saskatchewan. Check those out, you guys. Uh, check those guys out, you guys. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you want to order uh, custom inserts, custom foam inserts uh, for your gun cases and that, uh, whether it's for guns or knives or tools or anything like that, uh, they've got a promo code. Uh, for 15% off, it's BS15. That's guarddoginserts.ca. Uh, BS15 for 15% off your purchase. Um, who else am I messing? I'm terrible at this. <laughs> I think that's got everybody today. Any last words? Um, no, that's it. Um, I'm more active on my secondary channel, which is a fishing channel. So if anybody wants to come over there and do that I'll debate me on that one um it's literally just shorts like i'm just out fishing it's called bending lures 
you want to come over there and aggravate me on that one? <laughs> I welcome it. Um, it shows more of my petty side of comments of people that are rude that I don't really show on my firearm side. Um, so people get Ron, rude about fishing. Oh, dude, you would be amazed. Um, Ron right? Wayne. Oh man. So Ron Wayne has asked me about some of the comments before, and then he saw my replies. Um, I had one that was like, that's a cap on fishing because that fish looks like total crap. And I was like, <laughs> that's cute because the gamer seems to have it all figured out. And I replied yeah, with right. Kitsy emoji. Um, I'm <laughs> petty, man. I'm extremely petty. People don't realize how petty I am. Um, so Well, admitting it is the first step, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Um, but I'm still going to be the same petty guy that I've always been. Um, I've been told <laughs> I'm petty more than once. <laughs> don't sweat the petty things and don't pet the sweaty things. And that's the last piece of advice I got. What do you mean? You got to pet the sweaty things. <laughs> Man, I don't know. It might be a little salty. <laughs> all right, folks. Thanks for joining us tonight. Been a pleasure having you, all of you. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye, everybody. But some of these bullets, as you saw, have an incendiary device on the tip of it, which is a heat seeking device. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Welcome to your weekly dose of BS, the Holistically Speaking Podcast.